Tonight, the FTC sues Amazon, Aereo wants to try it again as a cable company, and what is CEO Satya Nadella's vision for Microsoft? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 126 for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. Let's get right to the tech feed. Today, the Federal Trade Commission sued Amazon, alleging that the retailer allowed children to make unauthorized purchases within its mobile application store. You may remember that earlier this year, Apple settled a complaint over a similar, similar allegation. The FTC says millions of dollars were charged to account holders because the in-app system allows children to incur unlimited charges on their parents' accounts without permission. The complaint states that several kids' games that encourage children to click on virtual icons were not clear as to what was game currency and what cost real money. Amazon said it refunded customers who campaigned. FTC Chairwoman Edith Ramirez also said even Amazon's own employees recognized the serious problem its process created. The FTC is seeking refunds for affected accounts and a court order to ensure that Amazon gets parents' consent for in-app purchases. Microsoft has been feeling the virtual heat this past week with a botched takeover of IPs and domains from no IP, a dynamic DNS provider wholly owned by Nevada-based VitalWorks. The takeover, authorized by a federal judge, was prompted by Microsoft identifying several no IP domains that were being used to communicate to compromised PCs. Microsoft intended to host all of NoIP's domains on their Azure's web services, but the sheer number of DNS requests was too much for Redmond and they were forced to return the IPs and domains to VitalWorks. It was an unqualified mess, but at least now we know why they were willing to risk such bad PR. The takedown broke the command and control of 4.7 million infected PCs and allowed Microsoft to identify 4.7 million others that are still being used as bots. Microsoft is hailing the takedown as their most successful digital crime-busting operation ever, though next time they may want to ask nicely before breaking the internet for 1.8 million customers. It's been almost two weeks since a Supreme Court ruling destroyed Ariel's business model, and many have speculated as to what might be next for the plucky startup. Well, now we know. In response to the Supreme Court siding with NBC, Fox, CBS, ABC, and other broadcasters over the right to stream content from rented dime-size antennas, Ariel is now saying that they want to be considered a cable company. Yesterday, Aereo sent a letter to U.S. District Judge Allison Nathan suggesting the company be licensed as a cable company. Under this definition, Aereo would be eligible for a statutory license that would allow them to pay relatively inexpensive copyright fees to broadcasters. The broadcasters aren't really happy about it. They even made the point during the Supreme Court case that Aereo said it could not qualify as a cable system. We have to wait and see if the judge accepts the argument. Ariel also needs to convince the Federal Communications Commission and the Copyright Office that they are entitled to pay the license fee and be treated as cable companies. Stay tuned. Now file this one under the category of, we give up. Monkey Parking has decided to temporarily suspend operations in San Francisco. The Italian startup that let users of its app auction public parking spots was slapped with a cease and desist order last month from the city of San Francisco. In a statement issued by the company, Monkey Parking said, We are currently reviewing our service to clarify our value proposition and avoid any future misunderstandings. Coming up, the big donation that Elon Musk, Iron Man-esque CEO of Tesla, is forking over for the Nikola Tesla Museum. But next, I'll chat with Mark Millian of Bloomberg about Satya Nadella's vision for Microsoft. But today, I want to share with you a free and secure tool called personal capital that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of stocks, 401ks, bank accounts, etc., all on different sites with different usernames and different passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it all and you're probably paying too much. Personal capital brings all of your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, 
or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. This week, Personal Capital announced the integration of its award-winning app with Android Wear, available for download in Google Play. The Watch app seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances whenever and wherever they need it. It shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You'll also get tailored advice on optimizing your investments. So why wait? Signing up just takes a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investments right now. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. You must go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. Joining us tonight is Mark Million, tech writer for Bloomberg Technology. Uh, Mark, in an article written by one of your colleagues, uh, uh, Dina Bass at Bloomberg, she said that Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella has outlined his vision with more overhauls. Now, we've been waiting to hear from him on his direction for Microsoft since his appointment as CEO in February. This is a somewhat lengthy memo to his employees. What did we learn? What are the key takeaways? Yeah, lengthy is an understatement. He sent this 3,000-word you know, manifesto to the uh, entire Microsoft staff today. Uh, key takeaways were, you know, it sounds like he's making some grand pronouncements, but a lot of it is really the Microsoft that we've known for decades. Um, he repeatedly used the word productivity um, and, you know, essentially suggesting that uh, his Microsoft is going to be about making people's lives easier and you know making work easier and this is kind of the marketing messages they've been really hammering home in uh, in commercials recently um, but he really distilled it down to this one word um, but in these 3,000 words there was a lot that was hinted at but not said uh, for example uh, my my colleague Dina reported that um, that Microsoft is planning the prospect for some job cuts um, and that's, you know, in order to pull off this vision of sort of um, distilling what Microsoft is about, just the productivity plus Xbox, according to Nadella, he doesn't want to get rid of that, um, then they're probably going to have to cut some people. Oh, there we go. That's the big question. Although it's great that he's taking ownership, saying that this is his Microsoft, I think what speaks even louder are the things that he didn't mention. What are some of those elephants in the rooms? And as you mentioned, potential job cuts. Yeah, certainly the job cuts is is one that we're we're waiting for. He said in the memo that uh, you know over the course of this month, over the course of July, uh, we should expect some more um, insight into senior leadership and engineering changes that are coming, which is um, you know uh, probably in our view a hint at the coming job cuts. Um, but another thing he didn't really go into too much detail on is PCs. Um, and he talked a lot about productivity in the scope of um, a, a cloud-based and mobile-based world. And um, the, the large uh, absence of PCs, being Microsoft's bread and butter, uh, suggests that they're going to move away from, um, from their focus there. Um, and I think that, that has massive implications for how Microsoft does the rest of its business. I mean, it's it's a business built on selling packaged software, and uh, in the in the world of mobile and cloud, that's not really a workable model anymore. And so you've seen them move in the direction more of this, uh, you know, Live 365 and some of these subscription software uh, businesses. And he's essentially put in writing that that's where the focus is today. It's not on selling a packaged version of Windows every four years. Wow. Okay. Well, and that's a lot of information to be contained within one mess missive. But if you were to take a step back, what kind of tone do you think he was trying to set? Uh, it sounded like, you know, like any Microsoft CEO who has sent these, uh, these sort of rallying cries to the troops, um, he's, he just wants to get everybody fired up and sort of organized around this one mission. Um, and this sort of uh, thing is like uh, this sort of like email that he sent is pretty common for Microsoft executives. Um, uh, Balmer sent his uh, when he was 
you know, early on and then again around the devices and services um, uh, model that he had been talking about. And Bill Gates had also done this too. Um, and so this is Satya um, trying to put his flag in the ground and say, this is my company and here's what it's going to look like. I guess the only, um, maybe the only disappointment is that, he, you know, Satya's Microsoft looks a lot like everyone else's Microsoft. <laughs> okay, well, actually, that's, I think, the big question because we moved away from Bomber. So now the question is, how was this different from what we were getting from Bomber? Do you see a substantial uh, difference in what they're suggesting and in, in what they're proposing in what their vision is for Microsoft? Well, uh, Nadella did talk a little bit about this devices and services analogy that Bomber um, really put in place on his way out. Um, but I, it sounded more to me like a focus on software. I mean, productivity was the, the word that kept coming up. He talked about cloud services. There wasn't a whole lot around, you know, we want to be, uh, we want to be an Apple and create, you know, a bunch of profitable hardware devices. They still have the surface and they've been updating that. Um, they've just welcomed Nokia into the company. Um, but Nadella's Microsoft did not sound one that was so heavily focused on hardware, uh, which is what Balmer was kind of um, inching toward uh, as he was leaving. Um, so I think that, and, but, you know, on the flip side, we're still going to have the Xbox. The Xbox is not really about productivity. It's about play. But he, um, he almost included that in the memo as a caveat, uh, almost like we're all circling around this one theme except for the Xbox group because they're doing really well um, by themselves <laughs> doing their own thing with gaming. Well, thank you for your insights, Mark. Uh, can you tell me, where can folks find you if they want to find some of your work and find some of your insights? Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter, uh, at Mark Million, and uh, check out Global Tech on Bloomberg uh, for all the great technology uh, research and news that's happening outside of Silicon Valley. It's Bloomberg.com slash Global Tech. It's Mark Million from Bloomberg. Tech writer, thank you very much for being on the show. You have a good evening. You too. And to end the show, we'd like to say happy 158th birthday to Nikola Tesla, who was born at the stroke of midnight on July 9th, 10th in 1856. And on that note, a few years ago, the cartoonist Matthew Inman, who is also known as The Oatmeal, raised $1.3 million on Indiegogo and bought Nikola Tesla's old lab with the hopes of turning it into a museum. A couple of months ago, the Oatmeal reached out to Elon Musk, CEO of the Tesla car company, for a donation. Mr. Musk tweeted and said he would help. Fast forward to today, and Musk told Inman he would give $1 million. Plus, the company will also build a Tesla supercharger station outside the museum. Inman still needs about $8 million more to make all this happen, but it's a start. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 and write us at tn2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Father Robert Ballasare. Thanks for watching. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.